Conditioned by ignorance, O monks, are sankharas. That suchness therein, that invariability, that not otherwiseness, that specific conditionality, that, O monks, is called dependent arising. Namaste. So this is a statement by the Buddha about dependent arising as a natural law. Whether or not there are Buddhas, whether or not there are Tathagatas who can discover this law and bring it out for other people to understand, the law still applies. It's a natural law like gravity. And it's just as powerful and all-pervading. Because Paticca Samuppada acts on all scales, from the galaxies and galaxy clusters all the way down to subatomic particles. So, of course, it's going to affect us, too. And it does. It is both the mechanism that entraps us in becoming an existence in the phenomenal world, and also the mechanism that leads to our release through enlightenment. The purpose of this series is to show just how that happens. So this video marks the end of the general explanation of Paticca Samuppada and the beginning of the specific detailed explanation of the 24 different steps. <laughs> so you see why I said this is going to be a long series. You wouldn't think that there's much you could say about ignorance. But as I was doing my research <laughs> last night, I realized I could do a whole series just on ignorance. Ignorance is a big deal. <laughs> Ignorance, briefly, is the reason we're here. And the Buddha talks about ignorance in the context of dependent arising. From ignorance as a condition, sankharas arise. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes cessation of sankharas. Now, the thing about this is that once ignorance ceases, one by one, all the rest of the stages of the descending mode or phase of Paticca Samuppada also cease. Now, how does ignorance cease? <laughs> well, first, let's talk about what it is. Huh? Ignorance means not knowing. And, of course, the uh, ironic part of all of this is that in the beginning, we have unconditioned consciousness and we know everything. So the question, how do we come under the influence of ignorance, is answered by the nature of ignorance itself. Ignorance is desire. Desire is both positive and negative. I want this, I don't want that. And along with desire comes delusion. Thinking that, oh, I can dabble with these, these material phenomena and it won't hurt me. Huh? But the problem is, in order to interact with material phenomena, we have to manifest a body and senses and a mind, a personality and all that stuff. It's a package deal. So we can't get away from the suffering that is part of having a body. Yet in delusion, we think, oh, it's not going to hurt me. You know, there's, there's nothing about this that can do me any harm. We don't see uh, because we're focused on the object of our desire. So it, it's like when you go to the cinema, when you go to the movie theater, the movie is just a projection on a flat screen, 
of a bunch of still pictures in very rapid sequence. But we see it as something real, isn't it? In fact, Hollywood producers talk about the suspension of disbelief that has to occur for people to get enraptured with the movie. How does that happen? Well, part of it is the house lights are dimmed and the darkness, uh, which is like ignorance because you can't see anything, the darkness creates the context for the projected image to look real. And then we provide the sankharas in that context of ignorance to start believing that it is real. And we get caught up in it, we get involved in it. We, but we are engaged, to use the media term. So, of course, it's just an illusion. It's just a bunch of still pictures projected very quickly on a screen. But it looks like people are there and things are happening and they're moving around and talking and so on. This is because of the artist's makeup, the staging, the photography, the cinematography. And all this comes under the heading of Sankara. But this Sankara doesn't have any effect without the darkness of ignorance. If somebody opens the exit door, have you ever been in a movie and somebody opened the door and the sunlight comes flooding in the room? And immediately the whole show is revealed for what it is. Just a flat screen with some pictures on it. It ruins the whole illusion, right? So in the same way, when people come in contact with a realized being, whether directly, personally, or through writings or book, you know, books or even a video that can open the door and let the sunlight in and stop the illusion due to ignorance that allows for the creation of Sankara. So, with the complete cessation of ignorance, all the other links of Paticca Samuppada also cease. And this happens immediately. Huh? Akaliko, we did a whole series on timelessness. The Buddha's teaching takes effect immediately. Once you set up the conditions, it all happens automatically by itself. Of course, the problem is we want, to, we want to cheat. We want to have it both ways. Well, I'll let go of the ignorance and the sankharas that create suffering for me. Huh? But I'll keep the ones that give me pleasure. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's a package deal. So once you accept ignorance and the delusions that go along with it, then you get everything, the whole nine yards. Birth, old age, disease, death, suffering, lamentation, in ignorance and, and unknowing. See? So even one little attachment will stop the complete cessation of ignorance. This is why uh, a really serious meditator has to go all the way. The function of ignorance actually highlights the delusion, right? A delusion is an illusion. It's not true. And when the light is shining on it, when there's knowledge, it's very difficult to maintain this delusion. But when there's darkness, it's like the movie theater. Huh? It looks real only because it's not being compared with the real source of light, the sun, the knowledge. But anyway, this ignorance is called avidya in Pali. It leads to four perversions of perception, mind and view. Perception of permanence in the impermanent, perception of beauty in the repulsive, perception of happiness in the painful, and perception of self in the not-self. 
Thus, sentient beings are ruined by wrong view, deranged, out of their minds. <laughs> the Buddha thinks we're nuts. <laughs> we are. We are. Because we're accepting a show as something real. We're accepting the impermanent, huh? the body, thoughts and the mind, our identity, huh? our self. Huh? We're accepting as real and permanent, but they're not. Because they have a beginning, they also have an end. Because we are engaged with time, they're going to always be changing. So as soon as we get attached to them, they change and become something else. Just look at how your mind has changed, for example, since you were a kid. Your tastes, your activities, your likes and dislikes, your understanding of the world and knowledge of how things work. Look at how they have changed and they're going to continue to change. <laughs> That's not going to stop until you attain final enlightenment, Nibbana. Because the uh, ignorance allows for the creation of sankharas. Uh, sankharas are antic commitments. They were promise that you make to yourself or others to be or become something in the future, uh, the non-existent future. So this is how we become engaged with time. And according to the Buddha, there are four kinds of sankharas. Sense desires is your first battalion. The second is called dejection. Hunger and thirst make up the third, and craving is called the fourth. Well, sense desires are pretty obvious what they are. They are the desires for pleasure and enjoyment that go above and beyond the actual needs of the body. Isn't it? Luxuries. These are the things that get us in trouble. And then we start creating an artificial personality, a phony identity to get these sense pleasures. And we do so many stupid, unnecessary things. Huh? Waste of time and energy. Totally. And then dejection. Dejection means I can't attain self-realization. Enlightenment is too far away. Huh? <laughs> I can't meditate. I can't even concentrate. Boo-hoo. <laughs> Might as well go get drunk. <laughs> so dejection means thinking that you're a failure at attaining enlightenment. And now, if you think you are, then you are. That's the rub. So it's a self-created illusion that you can't attain. But actually, every sentient being has the ability to attain enlightenment, even animals, with the proper situation and proper help and so on. So what to speak of any human being? Then there's hunger and thirst, the needs of the body. Well, there's not much you can do without except to minimize it, cut out all unnecessary luxuries and things like that. And finally, craving. Cra what is craving? Craving is a habit. It's caused by attachment and engagement in these sense desires again and again and again until it becomes habitual and the body becomes addicted and it starts to demand it. This is craving. Because of craving, we do so many nonsense things, isn't it? And then we suffer. <laughs> so these are the four kinds of sankharas. And why do we chase after sense pleasure? He, on being touched by painful feeling, delights in sensual pleasures. Why so? Monks, the untaught worldling does not know any escape from painful feeling except sensual pleasures. He hasn't understood, huh? he hasn't realized that these sensual pleasures are the cause of his painful feelings. So he can't stop them because he thinks, oh, this is my escape when painful feelings come. 
So in that way, he creates ongoing karma that keeps him wrapped up in this material body and this whole uh, samsara, birth after birth after birth, millions of births, billions, uncountable numbers of births. So all of these are distracting thoughts that arise due to ignorance. Uh, the mind is like the projector in the movie theater. And it's always projecting these thoughts, which, if you examine them closely, most of them are simply dreams, simply illusion, simply nonsense. All of our sankaras, out of all the sankaras, the thousands and thousands of sankaras we create, how many of them ever come true? Huh? See, these are just dreams. I'm going to become this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do, I'm going to join the gym and lose weight. Uh, New Year's resolution. Those are good sankaras. <laughs> so the problem is we cannot see that these are the things that bind us. These are the things that make us lose our freedom and cause us to suffer. So what's the cure? We have to attend to this process of paticca samupada, both in the forward direction and in the reverse direction. Uh, we went over the reverse direction in the beginning when we described how the uh, Buddha Vipassi discovered paticca samupada eons ago. Uh, he started from how do we stop death? Well, we have to stop birth. How do we stop birth? We have to stop becoming, and so on. Back, 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 until he discovered that ignorance is the root cause of everything. <laughs> and then the forward direction is ignorance causes sankara, sankaras cause consciousness, and so on. So by seeing both of these directions moving simultaneously, it's easy to, one by one, make them cease. And when we do, then we experience the release. Uh, and this leads to Nibbana. Thus, deliverance or freedom is not something that happens in a future life. It's not something that happens after death and we go to some heavenly place or something like that. It's something that can only happen right here and now with the proper application of Paticca Samuppada. He in whom lust, hate, and ignorance have been made to fade away has crossed this ocean so hard to cross, the ocean with its convulsions, demons, and the danger of waves. The material life, samsara. Buddha Sarnai. <laughs>